Let's see a possible workflow in SIPE HVAC, creating a new job from scratch. In other words, a new file, for which we will define a path and a file name. We can also add a comment. We are immediately offered the possibility of connecting to a shared project in BIM Server Center, a project that can store BIM models that help us to define and design the system, such as architectural references or thermal load results. In this case, we will decline the invitation by unchecking the corresponding box. Alternatively, the application can use a wizard to generate floors for organising our system. In our case, we create a ground floor at elevation 0 and a height of 3.5 metres and floor 1 with the same height. We maintain the default roof reference. Once the floors have been created, the wizard can be used to associate CAD templates. We can select one or several files. DXF, DWG or even image or PDF files can be imported. Once imported, we can control the visibility of the different layers and the association to the different work views. The application then shows us a blank canvas with the available tools in the top ribbon and the different work panels. The first one allows us to manage the views or create new ones. The second one to control the visibility of reference models. There are none in our case, so we can hide them. And the third one to control the visibility of the different types of elements that we define in our work. These panels can be freely configured. With the available graphic reference, we can start the system design. In this case, we start working on the ground floor view. We are going to consider a VRF system. Although we can define generic elements, the most convenient and reliable way is to use a manufacturer's catalogue. We download the catalogues, for example, from Bosch. First, we place some indoor units. We are going to work in 2D mode, without displacements with respect to our reference plane. The snaps of the CAD template allow us to define the precise location of each piece of equipment. Once the desired snaps have been activated, we proceed to place the equipment. We choose a wall-mounted indoor unit and once the series has been selected, the program chooses the appropriate model according to the thermal needs. We can control the orientation from the option bar. With the copy tool and the appropriate references, we can accurately locate the remaining equipment. 3. Regarding the graphic window, by pressing the shift key and the mouse wheel simultaneously, we can orbit our view to move to a 3D environment. Pressing Alt and 4 or the corresponding button in the view panel will take us back to the viewpoint associated with the work plane. This will allow us to check the location of the units. By pressing F4, we can activate or deactivate the visibility of the templates, allowing us to understand the system better. Although this is not necessary for the analysis, the correct thing to do is to place the equipment at the actual height. This could be done during the installation, but in this case we are going to do it afterwards with the Modify Height Position tool. Next, we place the outdoor unit. We choose a compatible outdoor unit, for example, the AF4300A, and place it outdoors. Again, once the series has been chosen, the program selects the appropriate model according to the overall thermal requirements. We connect the units with the refrigerant pipe layout. In this case, we will assign a displacement above the reference level. If we have a suspended ceiling at an elevation of 2.50, we can define a height of 2.60 for this layout. Next, we connect all the units together. Layout aids make it easier to align pipes in order to obtain an organised layout. The application automatically creates the vertical connections. The transition to 3D allows us to check the correctness of the layout. The copy onto another floor plan tool is used to replicate the installation on the floor above. By switching to a 3D view, we can make the final connection adjustments. To make the final connections in the 3D view, we switch to 3D mode for entering geometries. 
Once we have finished, we can then design and check. Our design does not consider any thermal load requirements because this information is not available. The editing of the units shows the supplied powers. This information could be entered manually and then replicated for the others using the Assign tool. The design now makes it possible to check compliance with the thermal conditions. With the system defined, we can obtain different supporting documents. Check reports. Schema drawings. And of course, exportable CAD drawings.